In this demonstration, we're going to configure management and all the same policies. Now, what I've done is I've logged in as a user called Andrew Dixon. Uh, what we can do as Andrew Dixon, we get some default permissions associated to Andrew Dixon. So one of the things that Andrew can do via the management rule assignment policy and the default is he has the ability to come in and edit his own information. So what we could do here is just on the contact information, he has the ability to put in information relating to himself. So we'll go for one St. James and then what we'll do here is we'll then go for zip postal code, we'll make that any one. 5EN. Let's go for City. We'll change that to actually be Newcastle. And then what we'll do here is we'll change the state province to Tyne and Weir. And then if we scroll down, I'm happy with the United Kingdom, but we will make the office Newcastle. Just come back up here. I've got to stick the gate on the end of there. Then what we'll do is contact numbers. So he's got his work phone number in here. That's actually changed now. So that's going to be 0191234 And then what we'll do is we'll just click the save button. And what we should find is Andrew has successfully saved off information related to his contact information. Next thing we'll do here is we'll come to groups. And within groups at this point here, we'll click the plus button. And then what we'll do here is we'll look for a group. Let's look for IT. Let's just do a search. And we'll see that we don't have any permissions to actually do anything with groups. So we'll just select close at this point here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to modify Andrew's permissions. Uh, within our company, we're not happy with users being able to modify their own information. We use that information pass for a third party product. That third party product pulls information into the product and that information is quite specific. So we don't want users messing about with the information as it may lead to misleading results. So what we need to do is we need to go into the Exchange Admin Center. So what I'm going to do at this point here, I'm just going to log Andrew out. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to launch back up the Exchange Control Panel. But this time we're going to log in as Administrator. And that'll then take us into the Exchange Admin Center. So I'm going to come to Permissions. Below Permissions, I'm going to go to User Rules. And within User Rules, I have a default rule assignment policy. Now this applies to everybody. So if we just edit this default rule assignment policy, what we can see at this point here, this policy grants end users the permission to set their options in Outlook on the web and perform other self-administration tasks. I have decided as the administrator, I don't want users to be able to modify their contact information. Like I said, it's used for a third party product. Right down here as well, profile information. This rule enables individual users to modify their name. No, definitely not going to allow them to do that. Distribution groups. This rule enables individual users to create, modify and view distribution groups and modify, view, remove and add members to distribution groups that they own. Let's turn on that tick box. Distribution group membership. This rule enables individual users to view and modify their membership in distribution groups in an organization, provided that those distribution groups allow manipulation of group membership. So one of the things we can do with distribution groups in Exchange 2016, we can create them with open membership. And then users can add themselves and remove themselves from those groups as required. I'll actually allow that permission. Other rules, my custom apps. This rule will allow users to view and modify their own custom apps. Definitely not. My marketplace apps, this rule will allow users to view and modify their marketplace apps. Nope. My read write mailbox apps, nope. So this rule will allow users to install apps with read write mailboxes. And my base options allows individual users to view and modify their basic config of their own mailbox and associate these settings. I will allow them to do that because I might want them to modify some of the settings. Retention policy, so it enables users to view their retention tags and view their retention policies. No, I won't let them do that. I won't let them do anything with my text messaging. So users will not be able to create and view and modify text message settings. And I won't allow them to manage their voicemail either. My diagnostics. So this rule enables end users to perform basic diagnostics on their mailbox, such as retrieving calendar, diagnostic information. I'll let them do that. And my team mailboxes, well, I'm not using SharePoint, so I'll turn off that permission as well. We'll then select save. It will tell me that this may affect more than one user. Am I happy with that? Yes, I am. Once that's saved off, all we'll do is we'll log out as administrator. 
and then what we'll do is we'll log back in as Andrew and see if those changes have taken effect. So then, first thing to do here, come to account, click on edit information, go to contact information, everything's greyed out. So that point there, he doesn't have the ability to modify any of his settings. If we look at contact numbers, again, greyed out. Can't modify any of those settings, so let's just click cancel. Then what we'll do is we'll come to groups. Now within groups, I now have distribution groups that I own. And what we'll do is we'll click the plus button, that then brings me into wizard. So what I can do here as Andrew now is I can create a distribution group. So what we'll do here is we'll create a group for marketing supervisors. So I'm going to create marketing supervisors. Alias will be marketing supervisors. Won't bother with any notes. We'll scroll this down a little bit. Andrew Dixon is the owner. So what we could do at this point here is we could add some members. So let's just click the plus button. And what we'll do off the list, we'll just add AMRA. Select OK. Now we've now added AMRA. And what we'll do at this point here is we'll make this close membership. So members can be added only by the group owner. So the only person that can add members at this point now then is Andrew Dixon himself. And then what we'll do is select our save button. Now we've now created a new distribution group. And that's the end of this demonstration of modifying the default permissions assigned to users. Thank you.